Hi, welcome to our video series on personal protective equipment for healthcare personnel. Now you may have heard the term PPE and thought, what is that? Well, I know we gave it away in the title, but PPE is just a shortened way to say personal protective equipment. And if you're going to be part of the healthcare team, this is critically important to your safety and the safety of your patients. Now PPE can include gloves, gown, goggles or a face shield, and masks. It can be one of these or multiple pieces of this, maybe even a full set. It just depends on the type of precautions your patient needs. So why is this PPE so important for the healthcare team? Let's pause for just a minute here and take a look at the two most important benefits of PPE. First of all, PPE protects you. If you're a member of the healthcare team, your healthcare personnel, you need a barrier between you and the infectious germs. So that's the first important benefit of PPE. The second is PPE protects patients by stopping or preventing the spreading of infections. That's why with certain precautions, you put on the gear before you go in the room, but you take it off before you leave the room so you don't spread it to other people. That's an example in contact or droplet precautions. Remember the difference with airborne is we want to make sure that you exit the room and close the door before you take the mask off. So when you're thinking about PPE and certain precautions, it's very important that you know exactly what type of precautions are required. But overall, the biggest benefits, the most important benefits for PPE are to protect you as the healthcare personnel and to protect patients from catching or spreading this infection to them. Now, as we've talked about earlier, the type of PPE varies with the type of precautions that are required. So you see, we've got each of the pieces of equipment up there with a big fat question mark. That's because I wanted to stop and do a quick review for you. With contact precautions, remember you're required to wear gown and gloves. But if the patient has droplet precaution, you're going to require a surgical mask if you're going to be within three feet of the patient. If you have airborne precautions are required for your patient, you need to have a particulate respirator, not a surgical mask. You're also going to need a negative pressure isolation room whenever possible. Now, in the case of a pandemic, we may not have enough rooms that are negative pressure isolation rooms, but the idea of a negative pressure isolation room is to keep those bugs out of the ventilation system of the rest of the facility. Okay, so this is a great review slide for you. You might want to put a star by that in your notes, just in case you need a quick review. Now let's talk about the correct order for putting on your PPE. First thing, you're going to put on the gown. Next, you put on the mask or the respirator. And remember, you'll determine whether it's a mask or an N95 respirator based on the type of precautions goggles or your eye shield, and you'll finish off with your gloves. Now, I always remember that because everything is harder with gloves, but they're a necessary evil. Okay, we just looked at the four pieces in order. Now let's break them down a little bit and tell you key points you need to consider. Step one is putting on your gown. So you want to make sure that the gown fully covers your torso from your neck to your knees. Then on your arms, you want to make sure it goes all the way down to the end of your wrist and then it wraps around the back. Now you'll have a tie on these gowns. Actually, you'll have two of them. Make sure it's fastened in the back at the neck and at the waist. Now we're not talking about a sterile gown, so you can tie this yourself and you'll be fine. If you're in surgery, it's a lot more complicated to put a gown on, but for these precautions, it's not a sterile procedure to put your gown on. So step one, you've got your gown on. Next, do you remember what you put on? Right, it's the mask or the respirator. So you see in that first picture, he's got a surgical mask on and it's tied in two spots. So you wanna secure the mask with ties or the elastic band, whatever it has, in the middle of the back of the head and at your neck. That will help you keep the mask securely on your face. Now notice the mask is covering his nose and his mouth underneath his chin, and that's really important. You want a close, tight seal on that surgical mask. If it's a respirator, it's gonna have a tighter seal than that mask, but both masks need to be firmly on your face to be effective. 
Now see how he's got his fingers on either side of the bridge of his nose. Pressing on that mask's flexible band at the bridge of your nose will help it fit closer to your face. Some surgical masks have them, respirators have them, so it's just another way you can adjust it and make the mask fit your face as effectively as possible. So keep it close and snug to your face, below your chin, and for respirators, make sure you've done a fit check. Now let's talk a little bit about fit check. We've introduced it in our video series, but I want to break it down a little bit for you. I can't do my own fit check. Fit testing is a series of tests and assessments that are performed by a trained evaluator. So you've got to have a certain skill set to evaluate if a respirator mask is the appropriate size and type of mask for each individual. Because that's what we're aiming for. We want to make sure the respirator that you're wearing by the shape of your face is a tight seal right on there. So it, there's multiple tests and steps that need to be done to make sure that a respirator fits your face correctly. Now hospitals will have different types of respirators. That's why you have the opportunity to choose. But when you hear people refer to fit testing for a respirator, I couldn't just walk into a hospital and grab an N95 and assume it's going to be uh, effective for me. I need to make sure that before I'm exposed or a place where I need to use an N95 respirator, I perform the appropriate fit testing with a trained evaluator. Okay, so you've got your gown on, you've got your mask on or your respirator. The third step is putting on your goggles or the face shield. So put the goggles and the shield over your face and eyes and just adjust the fit. You see the picture on the left is someone putting on goggles. Now if you wear glasses, sometimes these can be problematic. A face shield might be easier for you. So put the goggles and the shield over your face and make sure it fits kind of snug so it feels secure. You don't want it to slip down. Step four is putting on the gloves. Now these are clean gloves, not sterile gloves, so this is a lot easier. I'm sure a lot of you have post-traumatic stress disorder from trying to put on sterile gloves in your lab practicums, but this is much more straightforward. They're just clean gloves. But pull the gloves over the wrist of the isolation gown. You wanna make sure that you have the gloves go all the way over the cuff of the gown. There you have it. Now you are ready to care for your patient with precautions. We've just walked through the order of putting on your PPE, the gown, mask or respirator, goggles or eye shield, and gloves. But the removal of PPE is a little different. First, you're gonna take off your gloves, then your goggles or eye shield, your gown, and finally your mask or respirator. But there's something I wanna talk about before we get into that. You've got to be very self-aware when you're taking off your PPE. So if I could have woo woo sirens and flashing lights, I would have it on this slide because you cannot become apathetic when you're doing this. You have to be alert and aware. Don't get distracted because you want to make sure if you contaminate your hands at any point while you're trying to remove your PPE, you must immediately go and wash your hands or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. So danger, danger, Will Robinson. You want to make sure you're self-aware, pay attention when you're taking off your PPE so you don't contaminate your hands. Now we're going to get a little more specific in each of these four steps of removal of your PPE. First, we're going to talk about removing your gloves because that's step one. So pull the first glove until it comes off inside out. Remember, the outside of your gloves are contaminated. So as you're pulling it off, only touch the outside of your gloves and pull it off inside out. Now take that glove and put it in your remaining gloved hand. See our picture? So the glove that's inside out is now holding it in the other hand. So gently insert your ungloved hand at the top of the wrist. See how they're only touching underneath the glove? Because you wanna make sure that that's the part that's not contaminated. So insert your ungloved hand, your fingers at the top of the wrist, then turn the second glove inside out while pulling it away from your body. Now the reason you pull it away from your body is because if there's any germs coming off that, you want it to move away from you. 
Now, when you're done, the first glove should be inside the second glove. I had a good friend that always used to say, party pack, every time she did that. Don't ask me why, but that's what still sticks in my head every time I take my gloves off. So you pull the first glove off until it comes off inside out. You put that glove in your remaining hand. Then you slide your fingers underneath to the uncontaminated part. Pull that second glove off away from your body. And the first glove should be tucked inside there. And you drop it in the appropriate trash. Now, I... I would encourage you, if you haven't done this before, to just get a pair of regular gloves and practice this. It'll make much more sense if you're doing it with a pair of gloves on your hands. So now we've got our gloves off. Next step, right, removing goggles or face shield. So keep in mind, staying alert, that the front or outside of your goggles or shield are contaminated, so you don't want to touch that with your hands. Remove the back by lifting the headband from the back of your head without touching the outside of your goggles. If you make a mistake and you touch the front or outside of your goggles or the eye shield, make sure you stop and wash your hands or use alcohol-based sanitizer immediately. Now I wanna show you two different options for how you remove your gown. You've got two ways to do this. We're gonna call this option A. Remember, you've already removed both of your gloves in this method, so the outside is considered dirty or contaminated. We are talking about your mask, we're talking about your eye shield, and especially when we're talking about your gown. So be careful when you're untying your gown. Make sure your sleeves don't contact your body in any way because they're contaminated. Pull the gown away from your neck and shoulders Turn it inside out and then fold or roll it into a bundle and discard it in the infectious waste container. Now this can take a little bit of practice, so I would recommend that you do that. Remember, you've got to reach back and untie your gown and make sure your sleeves don't touch your body. That would contaminate you. You want to pull the gown away from your neck and shoulders turn it inside out, and then fold or roll it into a bundle and discard it in the infectious waste. So that's option A. Let's look at option B. I'm not very patient, so I tend to do this way when I take a gown off. Remember that outside is still dirty, but instead of untying your gown, because I'm not really good at making great knots, you wanna touch only the outside of your gown with your gloves on, and then you wanna just pull the front of the gown away from your body, so the ties break. It's pretty easy to do, it's not painful, but just pull that gown until the ties break. Now when you're removing the gown, peel off your gloves at the same time and be really careful to only touch the inside of the gloves and gown with your bare hands. So do the same thing, kind of fold or roll it into a bundle and discard it in the infectious waste container. Now you remember how to remove your goggles and your face shield, it's the same method. That front or outside is still contaminated. You wanna make sure that you remove it by removing from the back by lifting the headband from the back without touching the outside of the goggles. For a mask or a respirator, you wanna do this outside of the room with the patient's door closed. Now let's walk through the rationale of that. Before I go into a patient's room with airborne precautions, I want to put on the respirator to protect myself. Now when I remove it, I wanna be outside of the room with the door closed. So I'm not gonna expose the rest of the unit to those bacteria or viruses. That's why I go out of the room, the door is closed, then I'm gonna take off the respirator. Remember the front of that mask or respirator is contaminated, so you don't wanna to touch that area. Just grasp the bottom of ties or elastics of the mask or respirator, then the top ties and remove it without touching the front. Now, this is harder than it sounds, so if you're new to this, you wanna make sure that you get a clean set and just keep practicing so you don't feel like you're so fumbly. Now a question has come up, can you reuse an N95 respirator? Well, they're actually intended for single use, but if we're in a time of severe shortage, like possibly in a pandemic, they can be reused. 
It's not ideal, but it is acceptable as long as the mast is still structurally and functionally sound. Their integrity of the structure or the function hasn't been broken, and the filter isn't physically damaged or soiled. That's what OSHA says in the United States. So while it's not our first choice, you can actually reuse an N95 respirator. So now you're familiar with how to put on PPE safely, how to take it off with extra caution to make sure you don't contaminate yourself. Let's do a quick run through of the three types of transmission precautions. First, take a look at contact precautions. We've got it there in your graphic. Remember, contact precautions are going to make sure that you wear gloves and gown. Hand washing, it goes without saying, and yet I'm doing it anyway, is a part of universal precautions and all of the transmission precautions. So for contact precautions, it's gloves and gown. For droplet precautions, you want to protect your eyes, nose, and mouth. So that way you've got an eye shield or goggles and an appropriate mask. Make sure that you remove that face protection before you exit the room different than what we do for airborne precautions. Remember, airborne precautions require an N95 or higher respirator. Now, that's a very special mask that has to be fit tested in order for it to be effective. Make sure that you're outside of the room and close the door before you take this off and keep that door closed. Now, it depends on the bug or the virus or the bacteria that we're trying to not transmit to protect the healthcare provider and the patients from that will determine if you have contact, droplet, or airborne. But I think you're aware we've had some super bugs lately that we've used all three of those types of precautions, contact, droplet, and airborne. And that's when you put all the gear on head to toe, covering your eyes, nose, mouth, torso, arms, and hands. So let's wrap up this video series. In a nutshell, PPE is personal protective equipment that's intended to keep healthcare personnel from being exposed to infectious organisms and from spreading that infection to others. The most common type of PPE are gowns, masks or respirators, goggles or face shields, and gloves. Full PPE should also be put on in this order gowns, masks or respirators, goggles and face shield, and gloves. PPE should be removed in this order. Gloves first, then your goggles and eye shield, gown, and mask or respirator. Remember, if you're in airborne precautions, you take that respirator off after you've exited the room and close the door. If a healthcare personnel's hands become contaminated at any point when they're removing their PPE, they need to immediately wash their hands with soap and water or alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Thanks for watching our video today and keep yourself and your patients safe out there.